Hello, everyone. My name is Troy Gilmore. I'm an associate professor at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and I appreciate the opportunity to share a field experiment that we conducted with the help of CTEMPS. This field experiment was a comparison of groundwater discharge estimates that we made with and without guidance from fiber optic distributed temperature sensing. Of course, I want to acknowledge my collaborators and co-authors, especially noting Mason Johnson, who was the graduate student leading this effort at the time, and Sydney Corcoran, who was an undergraduate researcher at that time as well. We had financial support from the Water for Food Institute at the University of Nebraska. My home unit at the University of Nebraska is in the School of Natural Resources, and I am part of the Conservation and Survey Division, which is Nebraska's Geological Survey. But before getting into the actual research, I thought it would be worth mentioning some of the benefits of working with CTEMPS. So first of all, from my experience, they were very responsive to our needs in terms of technical support, uh, we were working out here in the Nebraska Sand Hills. That's about a five hour drive from Lincoln, Nebraska, and in a fairly remote location with, uh, for instance, very limited cell phone coverage. CTAMPS really tried to work with us in helping us to review data, even as we were collecting it from the field and so on, so that we could have a successful field campaign. The second thing I'll mention may be of interest to any of you who are early career researchers, maybe those of you that are going through the tenure process now at a university. Based on what was relayed to me from my departmental promotion and tenure chair, the external reviewers who reviewed my file commented not only in the range of field techniques, but specifically mentioned the DTS work. So with that, we'll get into the actual research on this project. So I come from a background where we are often thinking about streams as a way to kind of peer into that invisible groundwater resource that connected aquifer below a gaining stream. This is a classic setup out in the field where we're in a sandy stream. We set up a transect of points across a stream. We can measure head gradient. We can conduct falling head tests, for example, at these points to get a groundwater discharge. Uh, we can also sample here for perhaps nitrate in the groundwater that's seeping into the stream, perhaps the groundwater age as well. And so this is a, an approach that we've used in a variety of ways that I'll share, uh, but I'm, ref I'm going to refer to this as uninformed sampling. And what I mean by that is that we are selecting these points based perhaps on some reconnaissance work. That's what the asterisk up there is uh, referring to. There is reconnaissance work that you want to do in any stream reach uh, to make sure that your methods are going to lead to a successful campaign. But in this case, we're saying these points are not informed specifically by distributed temperature sensing or, or stream bed temperatures. So this is approach number one, and we use that term uninformed for this type of sampling. Some examples of that include these densely spaced groundwater discharge measurements in the Nebraska Sand Hills. This is the actual meter that you see there. It was developed by Kip Solomon at the University of Utah. This particular dense array uh, is from a paper that's in revision by his graduate student, Eric Humphrey. So this is a very tightly spaced, closely spaced set of transects. We've done this kind of work by spreading those transects out over larger reaches. The illustration here is a, an interpolated map of groundwater discharge over a 60 meter reach, where you can see the gray dots showing the point measurements that we made in that stream. Then we've also spread these transects out over much larger areas. In the example that's shown here, which you can learn more about at the web address that's shown, we did single transects of points in multiple tributaries in the main stem of a small watershed. So I'm calling that perhaps a watershed survey in terms of the spatial scales covered. So these are examples of approaches where uh, sites are selected, perhaps with some field reconnaissance, but without specific knowledge of, for example, stream bed temperatures measured by distributed temperature sensing. 
The second approach is the informed approach, we'll call it today. And this is when sample locations are specifically identified by looking at or measuring stream bed temperatures. In this particular study that we drew inspiration from by Rosenberry et al. 2016, you can see that there are cool zones highlighted here in yellow on that stream bed. So it's, this, is, this is a summertime situation where the stream water is warmer uh, than the groundwater below and the cool zones would represent potential areas of higher discharge. And in fact, that is what was found in this particular site that the cool zones where seepage meters were placed and measurements made uh, yielded a groundwater discharge of 0.83 meters per day, while the ambient zones, these are warmer zones or places away from the cool zones had much lower discharge of 0.17 meters per day. So these are, these are the two approaches that we're going to compare in this study. And we were asking the questions of whether the informed sampling would result in significantly higher groundwater discharge estimates and whether or not the informed and uninformed approaches give a fundamentally different picture of groundwater discharge variability. And we assess that what I'm calling a picture by looking at frequency distributions for the various groundwater measurements that we made in the stream. And then we were addressing this at a site in the Nebraska sand hills where you have fairly uniform uh, geology and the overall groundwater discharge rate or seepage rate was substantially lower than the median that was found in Rosenberry et al. 2016. This is a quick view of our study site with the DTS system in the foreground there. We had the cable going down over the hill and we, at any given time, we had about 700 meters of fiber optic cable in the stream, uh, sitting on the stream bed. These are, these are the students uh, out in the field uh, placing the cable on the stream bed. That is Sydney Corcoran on the left, Mason Johnson on the center, and then Marty Wells was also a master's student. He's in the stream, carefully placing this cable on the stream bed. This was a, a time-consuming task. You saw how much that stream meanders, and it's also a fine sand. So it was a major effort to try to stake out all of, all of the different meanders and corners, so to speak, and to also try to ensure that this cable was not either buried or coming up away from the stream bed. We used a, a rustic approach, a simple approach to identifying cool zones on along the fiber optic cable. Uh, in short, we placed the cable along one side of the stream. So perhaps the left bank, for example, we left it in place and then we uh, went back and looked for areas that were clearly uh, what could be considered cool zones along the length of that cable. There are much more sophisticated ways of pre-processing this data to find these anomalies. That's what we were able to do under the particular field conditions that we were working in at that time. This is a map of where we ultimately measured groundwater discharge in the stream. The thin yellow lines that you see along the length of the stream show exactly where we placed the fiber optic cable. This was done sequentially uh, on the right side of the stream, then we moved it to the center, and then we moved it to the left side of the stream. By doing that, we were able to find the cooler zones along the length of the cable. And then we went in at the places marked in with the black circles, and we made groundwater discharge measurements at those locations. And those were considered our informed sampling locations. They were informed. Uh, by the information we gathered from the cable. At the same time, we also laid out evenly spaced transects of points, very similar to what you saw in the earlier slides. And those are highlighted here by the yellow bars. So these are equally spaced three point transects with a right center and left point measurement of groundwater discharge at each of those predetermined or uninformed sampling locations. We had no temperature data before we decided on those locations. 
At each measurement point, we measure a head gradient using a piezo manometer, as you can see here, a vertical hydraulic conductivity estimate from a falling head test at the same point. And then we can calculate, of course, groundwater discharge using Darcy's law. On these plots, you can see groundwater discharge on the horizontal axis there. And I'm showing you the median value of groundwater discharge. The median discharge values were statistically different. <clears throat> now, part of the reason we have this plotted in kind of an odd way here is because we also want to look at the frequency distributions for the groundwater discharge. These distributions help us think about the variability in, in the range of groundwater discharges that we uh, measured. And you can see that the uh, frequency distributions are strikingly different for the informed and uninformed approaches. And in fact, they are considered uh, fundamentally different distributions uh, based on the statistical tests that we've run. You see a broader distribution from the informed approach capturing several high discharge points, uh, whereas the uninformed approach in this case is dominated more by those low discharge points in the stream bed. Now, of course, this raises the question of which one of these is correct. And that is something that's maybe not completely known. Um, it depends perhaps on the purpose of your study are you trying specifically to capture the high discharge points? Or are you trying to capture perhaps overall average discharge to a reach? Uh, we need to think about these things when we're designing our studies. So in conclusion, we found significantly different median discharge and the frequency distributions were also statistically different. And we found that DTS can be used in a pretty nuanced, fairly uniform, uh, environment in terms of the sand and so on in the stream bed. And we try to talk about in this paper some of the trade-offs or, or what this could mean for future work. So there were definitely some time measurement trade-offs in this study. So we spent really days installing and moving the DTS cable in part because we were trying to uh, align it with those left, center, and right positions along the bank. It could have been done perhaps a bit more quickly if you would just wanted a single uh, line down the center of the stream. Nonetheless, those are, those are hours or days that we could have spent uh, making other physical measurements. Uh, I already mentioned this to some degree, but there's some potential bias in groundwater discharge estimates if you are preferentially sampling at the high discharge points. So you need to think about this in terms of, am I trying to find a mean for the reach or am I trying to find just the high discharge points? And then ultimately we come to this pretty common conclusion in these types of studies where we think that, you know, maybe a hybrid approach is valuable. That DTS, that temperature information can help lead you to make sure you're not missing maybe some really important high discharge points along a stream reach. But maybe you want to also have those distributed uh, predetermined sampling locations to help you bring in some of the randomness of the discharge along a particular stream range. So these uh, are just a few thoughts and conclusions from this study. I hope this example, and also the, the thoughts that I mentioned about the value of working with, with sea temps, um, perhaps are some of some value to you today. So with that, I appreciate your attention. I want to thank the organizers again for the opportunity to talk about this study and some of the other work that we've been doing in streams and rivers and invite you, anyone who has questions, you're more than welcome to contact me uh, at the email shown here.